Hey, day drinkers. I am coming to you what feels like actually in the daytime. Um, I'm down visiting my family. I'm in my childhood bedroom, which they took exactly no time to immediately take over for themselves. <laughs> I was barely out the door before this, my bedroom became their office, which I look forward to doing to my children as well. So um, tonight is a good night. We have a great book a really, really interesting book. I'm so excited to share it with you. And we have a really great cocktail. Hey, B, good to see you. So my question uh, off the top here is, part of our cocktail has blue curacao in it. So if you know what blue curacao is supposed to taste like or what the flavor is, comment, comment below, comment no matter what, just say hi, like B, nice to see you. Uh, so I'm gonna read the back cover copy because my mom likes that and she's in the other room talking so loud. Mom, if you can hear me. <laughs> so here we go. The name of the book, this week's book, book is Summertime Guests by Wendy Francis. Wendy Francis is my guest. Uh, and here's the back cover copy. The Seafarer is the place to see and be seen in the summer. With its rich history and famous guests, the glamorous Boston Hotel is no stranger to drama. But the bustle at the iconic property reaches new heights one weekend in mid-June when someone falls tragically to her death the event rippling through the lives of four very different people. Bride-to-be Riley is at the hotel to plan her wedding. She would have preferred a smaller, more intimate celebration, but her bossy mother-in-law has taken charge and her fiance hasn't seemed to notice. Jean-Paul, the hotel's manager, is struggling to keep his marriage and new family afloat, but now he must devote all his energy to the latest scandal at work. Claire, recently widowed, comes to town to connect with a long lost love, but has too much changed in the last 30 years? And then there's Jason, whose romantic getaway with his girlfriend has not gone exactly the way he'd hoped, and instead has him facing questions he can't bring himself to answer. Over three sun-drenched days, the truth about the woman who died and the secret she was hiding is uncovered. These four strangers become linked in the most unexpected of ways. Together, they just might find the strength they need to turn their own lives around. I mean, sounds so good. Let's, let's bring in Wendy here. Hey, Wendy. Hello. Hi. It's so good to see you, Molly. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Um, first, <laughs> so we are drinking a seafarer. We are. Cheers, my friend. <laughs> Cheers to you. And I ask every author who, who somehow has managed to get a, a signature cocktail for the book, are you tired of this drink yet? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, and I think it's the pretty blue color that just kind of keeps me going and thinking about summer. And um, yeah, it's funny. A friend of mine actually is a mixologist, and I had texted her and her husband and said, you know, geez, there's this hotel in my book. It's called the Seafarer, and it's I'm looking for something kind of summery. And they said they were so excited. They said, oh, no problem. We'll whip something together. And they came back to me with this. And I was so impressed that they actually came back with something that looks like the sea. So, it does. Yeah. And I mean, I'm in I'm in my um, little hometown. I'm staying with my parents. Um, and you're supposed to have the, this powdered egg white. <laughs> Yes. Well, that, I knew that was for the kind of store. I, I sort of said, well, can we keep it simple? Because I'm the, those are not, those ingredients are not in my pantry. But, but if I was uh, home, if I was home, I might go search that out because yeah. what else do we have these days but cocktails and books? Right. <laughs> and if you can get sea foam on your cocktail, why wouldn't you, right? Exactly. So, so yes. I have to say, and, and, and perhaps as an author, you are the same. Every once in a while, I read a book and I like I am so jealous. <laughs> like, I'm jealous and I'm a little mad because the idea is like, it's one of those ideas that is so clear and so ripe and there's so much that can happen and does happen. And I'm just like, oh, why didn't I think of that? And I have that feeling reading this book. Oh, you're so nice to say that. Thank you. So, so I have to ask, ask you, so, so, I mean, as the back cover copy says, um, a woman has died. We don't know. We don't know who it is, and who, or whether she's been pushed or she fell. And then you have these four couples. One of them isn't a couple, but a, a woman whose husband has died, who's going to go see if she can reconnect with her lost love. Right. And and at at various times, you think it could be any one of these women, really. So yeah. my my first question for you is which. 
which idea came to you first? Like, how did this story begin for you? Yeah, it's crazy. And it's funny, the thing, the thing about being jealous as you're reading, because that happens to me all the time. And it's, it's usually just wonderful writers who, you know, you're so blown away by their beautiful prose and you think, oh, if only, if only I could write something like that or have come up with a character like that. So I do share that. I think that's something common among authors who read there's all the time. Special, there's a special pain though when it's a really good idea. Like, because it's not like, I'm, at points I'm like, I'm resigned, like, oh, I'm just not gonna be that that kind yeah. of writer. Yeah. But then a good idea comes along and you're like, I'm just not clever. <laughs> well, no, but see, that's the thing. I'm not clever either. And I just, I usually write much more intuitively. So I'm much more of a character driven um, author, I would say. And the setting is very important to me. That's almost a character in itself. And so this one was was a different book for me because it was so plot driven and it had the narratives did all have to sort of intertwine and I had to figure out how the story was really going to unfold so it made sense and none of my other books have been plotted that way and I think um you know while all my books are summertime books and they usually have some kind of family secret that's revealed in the end um I've never had a murder mystery I've never written a murder mystery so there are so many times where I was ready to just sort of um throw this out the window and say, you know, telling my husband, I am not a mystery writer and I don't know what I'm doing. So this took so many revisions and, and so many back and forth. And originally it didn't even start out as a mystery. Originally you knew who died at the beginning. So going back and revisions, I had to really rework things a lot to throw in some red herrings and to also make sure that, you know, all the scenes matched up with each other and, um, yeah, so it was so, a mean, challenge. This, this book is very um, character driven. Like it's a it's a deep um, sort of introspection on like relationships at different stages, um, and the setting plays a huge part. So yeah. did the did the the woman falling was that kind of your brainstorm at the beginning? Was that like your first? A woman falling or jumping or being pushed? I sort of I sort of was. Um, I th the actually originated the way I'm probably, I'd be curious to hear how it works for you too. Like you have a lot of different ideas percolating in your mind. And I knew that I wanted to, to write a novel that was um, based on love in different stages. So I had like sort of these four couples in my mind. Of, oh, I wanted to write about early love and that first flush of romance when you're just about to get married and the butterflies. And then I wanted to write about, you know, a young couple that had been married and had figured that part out, but then had a baby and the baby kind of threw everything into, you know, into stark relief of, you know, what are we doing here? How do we keep <laughs> our marriage on the, on the rails? And then I wanted to explore a relationship of a couple that had been together and had a very passionate romance, um, but we're sort of in that place of deciding like, of, well, do we go further with this or do we just call things off altogether? And then in Claire's character, I thought it would be interesting. I wanted to look at someone who had been married and had a successful marriage and had raised two kids, um, but also always kind of wondered about the one who got away and that, that what if question, you know, what if I had taken a different path or married a different man? How would my life have turned out? How would my children have turned out? And so that story was kind of at the forefront of my mind. Um, and then, as I say in the author's note in the book, my family and I were walking through the Seaport District in Boston, which, um, you know, years ago was kind of just a wasteland. It was parking lots. There were a few, couple of great restaurants there, Anthony's Pier 4 and Jimmy's Harborside. And um, they, but there really wasn't much to look at there. And then about two, I'm trying to think when, but after like maybe 2000, 10, they started doing, you know, renovations and the Big Dig Project, which which um, connected these two areas, the seaport to the more financial district of Boston. And in, in the process, the seaport district just transformed. And so there's the federal courthouse now there, there's the um, um, ICA, the, the Con Institute of Contemporary Art, there are beautiful parks, there are all these high rise luxury condos and restaurants, and like, it's the place to be and be seen. And I I remember walking through them like with my family and thinking, wow, this is just an amazing transformation. And how cool would it be if there had actually been like a grand old hotel that had been here 
through like the fishing pier years in the 1800s and and had the sense of history that all the you know the beautiful and famous have been coming to for years and years and so um, those two things kind of combined to make the story and then I knew I needed something to kind of bring these disparate characters and guests together in the novel um, so it was a bunch of different ideas, I guess, that kind of coalesced into one book, yeah. sort of, without my knowing it. It's funny, <laughs> it's funny how you kind of like you 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 pull something together, and you're like, well, that's I like that. I want to think about that some more, and I like that, and I want to think about that some, some more. And then there's that lightning strike of like, oh, well, that's how right. I bring it all together. Exactly. Um, one of our viewers has a question. Karen is asking, is it flashback style? Uh, go ahead, like. It, yeah, it's it does it does jump around in time, but only really for sort of the week preceding, leading up to um, the event of this woman uh, falling, jumping, whatever, from the um, hotel balcony. So um, I think it's more it's a, a truncated time frame. Um, so you're kind of going back to see what led up to the events before these couples arrived at the hotel and kind of what their motivations are for being there. Um, and so it does go back and forth a bit in time, but I hope that that helps to kind of enrich the storylines. It's, it's a very um, tight two timelines. <laughs> yeah. Know, um, yes, you know, after um, the accident at the hotel or the murder at the hotel or, or whatever it is, and then oh, the week before. So but it's those two timelines that, right. that bring it together. So um, speaking of your author note, um, I read it and you thanked your editor who had been editing this book while in quarantine with a new baby. Yes. Is this book entirely a quarantine book? Like, did you yes. write it in quarantine? Well, I'm trying to think. I sent the first draft uh, so I have been working on it in December of 20, what are we now? So 2019. And so she got the first draft in March, probably of 2020. And then she had her baby <laughs> in lockdown. And so it took her a few months, understandably, to get back to me with comments. Um, and, and yeah, so I did the rewrite right, pretty much all through the summer, I think, of last year up to um up to the fall and making last you know last minute changes up to sometime in december i think so it was wow. on a tight tight schedule but yeah it was um so that's my quarantine book <laughs> <laughs> i i ask everybody that i have on has has quarantine are you the author in quarantine who's been like i can get so much done look at me i'm amazing or are you <laughs> Yeah. You're, the, you're the what's on Netflix. I don't think that there's been one day I've thought, look at me, I'm amazing during quarantine. <laughs> I, I long to be those women and those authors, but no. Um, no, pretty much the opposite. And I'd be curious to hear how it's been for you too, but suddenly everybody was at home. So um, my husband was working at home. We're just outside of Boston. And, and my 12-year-old, um, basically was homeschooling from March till just recently. And they, they did start going back gradually um, and to hybrid to two days a week. So that was, that was helpful. But we also were one of those families who got the quarantine puppy. So we've had a dog, <laughs> a dog and a 12 year old homeschooling and my husband at home on a lot of conference calls. So yeah, it has not been conducive to good work environment. That, have, has everybody left? Your son's back at school. Is your husband back at work or is he still at home? He's still at home, but he's going back now more, I think. And he's just as eager to leave the house <laughs> as the rest of us, I should say. I, my, um, my son yeah. went back hybrid for high okay. school. And so yeah. it was you know, the half day, half day, yeah. like, whatever. And um, I remember the first like four hours I had alone in my house. I was like, <laughs> right, right. It's dancing in the streets, kind of yeah. thing. I know. It's it's yeah. And of course, if it so, my set up my home office then was downstairs, which is still like you know the base for complaints or computer problems or dog needing to be walked or fed or watered. So yeah, you get everything else done in those those stolen minutes. I call them right because yeah. you, the, you really have to fight for for your free time for your for your writing time, I guess, yeah. or work time, really. So yeah. you had mentioned that that so much of this book had changed. And, and it is like, it is, 
um, I think because I'm an, an author who really loves editors, editing. Mm. Like I, I really like the idea of I've handed this to you and this is as good as I can make it on my own. <laughs> right. So like, let's, you know, let's do this. Let's make it better. Yes. So yeah. how, like, what was the thing that changed the most? Like how, how, like, what were the most dramatic changes that, that happened in this book? Because I can't imagine that because it is a tricky timeline um, and that you do have these very nuanced relationships that, mm -hmm you know, are, are telling different, you know, different parts of the yeah. you know, spectrum of a, of a love affair. There had to be a lot. Yeah. So it was, it's exactly like you say, you get it to a certain point and you're just done with it. You know, like here it is. That's <laughs> the best I can do. Back. Yeah. It's quarantine. And <laughs> well, I hope you can do something with it. Cause I am done with it. So um, and then you drop your kindergartner off for the first time. You're like, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got for you. So, but I find it also very useful to just have that that time that gap of, of time when she's with the edits, and you know, of course, you take a couple of weeks to just celebrate. You're done. You can think about life again, and then um, having that distance to it and coming back to it. And so, I I really respect and appreciated her comments, which were great. Um, but also going back. And having been away from it, I don't know if you find this too, but you do realize like, oh, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Or that's not working or this really, you know, needs to be cut. And you don't see that when you've been so thick in the weeds of it, writing it. Um, and so I was grateful to have that time apart. And then she came back and she said, you know, she was great. She could have said, yeah, I think you should just start over or something, but she didn't. And she, you know, wrote a very thoughtful editorial letter and probably four or five pages. And um, she's the kind of editor. I mean, I've, I've had different editors and I used to be an editor, book editor myself. So it's kind of fun to see everyone's various styles. Um, but she's, she's pretty light, but she will end a chapter by saying, you know, you'll be looking through and you're like, oh, there are many comments here. And you'll get to the end of the chapter and I'll say, well, I don't know. I think this could end a little more dramatically or, you know, could, could this end somehow, some other way or something or punch it up a little. And you're like, oh, you do this completely differently. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought it was so good because there was nothing in the margins until I got to the last page of that chapter, you know. So, um, but she was, you know. I always right and I had to rethink things and then she did say you know at the end we did originally know who the woman was right. who plummeted to her death and without saying make this into a mystery she just sort of um did what I think all good others do which is to nudge me and say you know it feels a little anticlimactic I wonder if there's some way we could kind of increase the tension and so she had one idea but it got me you know, right. thinking about other ideas and that, oh, well, what if we maybe didn't know who it was um, at the get go, even though there is this, you know, it happens in the first chapter that this woman plummets to her death. But what if, what if her identity and, and the reasons or, or the why of how this happened were more of a mystery. And then I kind of threaded that back throughout the book. So it took, it took a lot of um, revising, probably more so than any of my books, other books. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I really loved about it, and I felt like it was um, this very, I mean, because you have, you have four different points of view. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I really liked was that it was this very careful reveal of information. So like you would create a question. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give this example. Um, Claire, who's uh, the woman whose husband has died and who, who's going to go see if she can rekindle a lost love. Um, we know at some point that she's kind of being followed. And right. then a little bit later, we know that she kind of got in trouble with some work and might be in trouble with the mob. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's like, you're like, oh, why is she being followed? Oh my God, is it the mob? Like, it's just this very careful layering of questions. And like, I mean, I, I, I mean, the question I want to ask is so stupid. Was that hard? <laughs> <laughs> like, did you did you did you go in thinking about that? Was that all in revisions? That I think, yeah, I think that original kernel of an idea had been there because I always knew that she was in trouble in, in her job, and that was sort of another 
underlying reason why she had come to the Seafarer Hotel in Boston was to get away for a little vacation, and she kind of gotten into a little wrinkle at work, and and I figured it was always, you know, the mob was always a good, you know, that's always we good for when you're a journalist. <laughs> if you're going to write about someone, why not write about the mob? So, um, so that one had always been there, but I think the the reveal of it and kind of how it unfolds in the story got tweaked a bit in the, the revision of it. You do it in another story and one of the other, you know, but the the Jason point of view, who's the, mm -hmm. the character who's in this really passionate relationship with this girlfriend. But we're like, we're finding out things about him the entire time that are like, mm -hmm. yikes. Like, yeah. and, and that you never, that, you know, the first time we meet them, we believe that they're a happy, exciting couple. Mm -hmm. And it really started. <laughs> so, so again, was that another, was, and I, was the plan always to have it in Jason's POV too? Like having it in his POV. Yeah, I always people. had those four original um, characters, their point of views um, or points of view, I should say. But they, um, I would say the characters themselves morphed a lot as the story went along. Um, so Jason's character, I think, became a lot more nuanced than it had been originally. Um, and Jean-Paul, who's the hotel manager um, and is from France, um, he was a really fun character to write because I just felt so sorry for him <laughs> because he was trying his best to manage everything at home and the new baby and his wife who may or may not have some postpartum depression and, you know, and then this crisis happens at work and he's just trying his level best to keep it keep all the balls in the air and and you know bless his heart it's it's all he can do to make everyone happy so um so i found myself maybe really empathizing with him yeah. and maybe that's just because it was during quarantine and i was feeling like i don't know i have to stop this crisis and put out this fire or whatever but yeah he was fun to write it's also a um, you know, considering the the mystery and the you know the the, the death, um, it's a surprisingly gentle story. Like it's mm. a very, I mean, it's it's not it's not quiet, but it's it's gentle. And I found that to be you know as as it it feels like every other book is like this thriller. Like mm -hmm. I felt this very, it was just very gentle. Oh. Well, that's nice of you to say. I hope, yeah, I hope there's more. I mean, I didn't want to do it just for effect because I'm not a thriller writer. I'm not a mystery writer. And I am much more into character-driven fiction. That's what I love when I read. Um, and that's what I love to write. And I, you know, I think um, people, you know, the saying of you never know what's going on in someone's life and don't judge because everyone's dealing with something. And I, I think that's so true. And um, it's easy to judge a lot of these characters or just on their face value. But then when you start to find out what's really going on in their lives or their relationships, um, my hope is that you can empathize with them on some level. Um, oh, yeah, you know, completely. That, yeah, that we've all had different struggles or different issues in our lives. And, um, you know, I hope though at the end that it's more of a, even though there's a tragic event that it's all centered around, that it's um, more of a, a, a hopeful, if not a happy ending, um, just in, in the takeaway from, from what the characters take away from it. It certainly is. It very much is. So can you, uh, so, I mean, do you, do you have a, a next project? I mean, I know that this book just came out and you're like, hey, I'm just got the kid off to school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but have you got, have you got something else that's coming out soon? Um, I'm going to meet my girlfriends on the corner for a coffee. <laughs> at the school drop box. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm writing. I, I, you know, I feel like, so we all have, always have something that we're imagining or writing or working on. Um, so I do, and it's it's another story um, set um, kind of close to home in a little town called Hull, which is much more of a um, kind of a working class town, but a, a, a fishing a fisherman town. And um, it used to be kind of the, called the Coney Island of New England. It used to be. Oh, wow all these great rides and Ferris wheels and people would go there to summer vacation and um, you know, lots of rich families had homes there and now it's, it's kind of 
past his heyday, but it's this great little community and um, it's about 45 minutes from where I live. And um, yeah, it just so I'm this a book that explores both the history of it, but it's about three women who come together there for various reasons without giving too much away. And I'm still trying to figure out some of the plot, but um, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be in a similar vein. I mean, I think all my books are kind of summer books and they're usually, you know, about, I'm interested in women's relationships and friendships. And um, so those sorts of same themes will be in it. Do you feel like having written something that um, is a bit more plotty or a bit more mysterious, mm -hmm. has that affected your, like, as you're thinking of, of this new project, are you like, I need to add some. I know. <laughs> it's a mystery here. Well, I'm afraid that's what I'm going to get is in, from editor's response. You know, my editor's response is going to have to rework it a little bit. So it's a little more um, plotted that way. But I think my natural instincts are to write intuitively. I have a general idea of the characters and the setting so much fun to research. And, um, I have a general idea of what might go wrong, but I might have to make it a little more, a little more dramatic than my usual, I guess, since and, and start adding that a little well, more. You element. started it, Wendy. You started. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I know. But what about you? Do you feel like you plot things out, or do you just kind of go with it and know your characters? Um, I, I usually um, like that the, something is always in the back of my head, the next project or a project. Yeah. And then, um, and it is the, Oh, I like that idea. And I like that idea. Yeah. And I like that idea. And um, then you just, it's waiting for that lightning strike that, mm -hmm. that connects it all. And once that lightning strike happens, I can start actually writing something, even if it's just the synopsis, even if it's the mm -hmm. first chapter, mm -hmm. um, but I find that, like, uh, you know, I was a person who plotted heavily. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I mean, I, like, I started writing for Harlequin. Like, my first uh -huh. contract with Harlequin. Yeah. And that machine is, if you, yeah. <laughs> you know, if once you get on the Harlequin machine, Various you got yep. to keep yep. going. Exactly. So um, I would plot really heavily, and it's so I could kind of keep up with it. Um, right. But now, once that lightning strike happens, I want to just get in there. And so it inevitably means that halfway a third of the way through the process I'm like oh man someone should have thought of this <laughs> so um right yeah. now I'm 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 finishing up my rough draft to send to my editor um and I have like I'm I'm just at that like it's funny when you're at the stage where you've just finished a book and you're sending it on its way you're like yeah. I, I'm never gonna have an idea again like yeah. that was my oh. last good idea yeah. No, I say that all the time to my husband. Like, I have nothing left to say. I put it all in this, whatever the last book is. There is nothing left to say. Yeah. I have no insights into anything. I'm done. <laughs> and then, you know, things, other things start to happen in life, and your kid says something to you that makes you think, oh, well, maybe I do have a few more things to say. So, but, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, Wendy, I cannot wait to see what you have next. And this is your, this is actually your fifth book. And I'm going to go back and check out your backlist. The yeah. Summer of Good Intentions looks amazing. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely chatting with you. Thank you. Uh, everybody out there, go pick up the book. Summertime guests. I uh, I saw it at my parents' Target. Oh, wonderful! Wow. When you made it to Target, um, and uh, everyone out there, stay safe. Get the vaccine. Yes. Read a book. Have a yes. drink. Exactly. Thank you so much, Molly. Cheers. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Bye.